We got to connect during soccer season and she was just always a nice person to be around and she was always very encouraging. And she even got our family these koalas that I always kept in my locker that always reminded me that I have people to look towards um, if I ever needed anything and she was one of those people. Hi Haley, congratulations on graduating. Um, these past few years being your little sister has been really great. You've been such a chill and laid back person and I loved having you in my oceanography class as well. And I just wanna say I wish you the best in college and I'm so happy that you got into your dream college and just best of luck, I'll miss you a lot. Even though I've only known you for a year, I could tell that you were super nice on the first day I met you. I know that wherever you go, you'll do super great in college, and I wish you the best of luck for next year. Congratulations, Vanessa, um, on graduating. I'm so proud of you, and um, I wish you the best of luck for next year. Um, as you go off to college, um, wherever you might be, I'll be praying for you. Um, mwah. Hey, Vanessa, I just wanted to say congratulations. I wish you the best of luck in college. I can't believe you'll be graduating high school soon. It seems like just yesterday we were at OLG. Thank you for being an amazing koala sister, and I know in the future you will do great things. Bye. Hey, Emily. It's your koala family. Your sisters are here supporting at your graduation. We are so proud of you, and thank you for being the best big sister. We're so happy for you, and we know you have a bright future ahead of you. Congratulations, and good luck next year. Congratulations, Michaela. Thank you for being a great senior sister and good luck in college. Hey, hey Michaela. Michaela. Uh, it's Teresa and Megan and we just want to say congratulations. We're so proud of you and we love you so much. Thank you for being such a good senior and for always being there for us and just being someone that we can talk to. Yeah, we love you. <laughs> Hi, Michaela, Clarissa here. Uh, good luck in college. We will miss you a lot. Best of luck. Congratulations on graduating, Grace. You've been such a good, big, koala sister, and I'm so excited for your future. You're going to have so much fun in college. Hi, Grace. Congratulations on graduating. You were a fantastic senior sister, and I'm going to miss you a whole lot, but I hope you have a really good time in college. Hi, Grace. Congratulations. Good luck in college. Hey, Grace. It was really great co-playing with you this year and getting to know you even better. You made so many great memories and I hope you have the best graduation ever. Hi Octa, congratulations. I'm so proud of you and for all that you've done. I want to thank you for being such an amazing role model for me and for pushing me to do my best. And I just wish you the best in college. I love you. Hey Therese, congratulations. Congratulations on all of you senior. I hope everything will be great. Thanks for leading us well. Um, congrats, Haley. Uh, you finished high school finally, and you're off to bigger and better things. So I hope you keep on being the amazing person that you are, and I hope that you do well in your future. Congratulations, Catherine. I'm so proud of you, and I'm so happy that we got to play softball this year together. Hey, Catherine. We made, we've made so many memories together, both in Algebra 2 and in Psychology and in Spanish. And I've always treasured them. You are an amazing friend and I hope you have a wonderful graduation. Congratulations, Huang. I've loved having you as my senior. Hi, Helen. I just wanted to say, um, I know that everyone in your family and your friends are so happy for you that you've graduated. I know I am. Um, I hope you have a good college experience <laughs> and um, I know you're going to do great in life. Hey Daisy, congratulations. I know you've worked so hard for this and I'm so proud of you. I'm going to miss you a lot and seeing you around and being in engineering with you, but I know you're going to do great next year. Daisy, you're an amazing soccer player and you're a team leader. And I just want to say congratulations on graduating. Some people may not know about this, but also Renee Iftikhar is going into college this year. And I'm just so proud of her because she was always such a nice person. And she was always 
just someone I could talk to and she always made me laugh sending me memes or something and um, she was just really kind and I just want to say I hope you do well in college Redeem. Hi Chelsea, I just wanted to say congratulations, you've earned it and I can't wait to see the things you do in the future. Congratulations on graduating Chelsea, wishing you the best of luck in college. Hi Chelsea, Hi. I'm super glad that I got a chance to meet you through to me as well as Conley. Yeah. Uh, you're such an amazing person and always so kind. And I'm and about to go into the room. Yes, and also I wish you the best of luck in life and everything that you do. And I'm going to miss seeing you around because I don't think you're going to come back to TV. But anyways, bye. Bye. Congratulations. Congratulations, Daisy Lean. Good luck next year. Congratulations, Daisy. Hi, Aubrey. I want to congratulate you on being on the class of 2020. I will miss you. Hey, Aubrey. I just wanted to say congratulations on graduating this year. That is so amazing, and I'm really proud of you. I know you're going to do great things in life. Good luck. Hey, Aubrey. I hope that you have the best graduation ever. And I really couldn't have asked for a better co-commissioner prayer this year. You were amazing, and I also enjoyed having you as my junior in my qual family last year. Congrats, Rianne, on your graduation. I hope you have a great time in college. I'm glad that I met you this year, and I know that you'll do great in college. Congratulations on graduating, Rianne. You've been a really great and inspiring team member on tennis and I've really looked up to you. Congratulations. Uh, congratulations, Noelle. Um, this is your junior, Lillian, wishing you the best of luck for your future. Congratulations, Noelle. This is such an amazing achievement. I'm so proud of you. And thank you so much for being such an amazing colleague since you to me these past two years. Congrats. Hey, Noelle. I just wanted to say congratulations on graduating and thank you for being such a cool senior this year. Hi Noelle, congrats on graduating. I'm really happy that I got a chance to meet you through Decathlon. And I just showered. And I am super happy for you. And you're one of the most kindest and most most amazingest person that and I've I am ever Vincent. Met that you are Decathlon president. And this is me, Vincent. Please. And anyways, I wish you the best of luck in everything that you do. Bye. Bye. Hey, Chris, I just wanted to say thank you for being such a great koala sister to me during my two years here. And I hope you do well in wherever your path takes you. Chris, just wanted to say congratulations on graduating. You worked really hard and you're going to do a lot in the world. Congratulations, Chloe. I'm so proud of you and I hope you have a great time in college. Hey Lucia, it's your sister over here. I just want to congratulate you on graduating. I just want to say that I'm super proud of you and to let you know that wherever you go, you'll be successful and I love you so much and happy graduation. Congratulations, Lucia. Thank you for being my older sister at Connolly. And I hope you have a great time in college. I'll miss you. Hey there, class of 2020, Morelli here. I just wanted to give a quick little shout out to the one and only Lucia Munoz. Thank you so much for making this year's basketball season so much more member memorable. Same along with Nina and Sarah. Congratulations, Maya. Thank you so much for being such a great older sister to me and the rest of our Koala family. I love you. I'm going to miss you so much, and I hope you have a blast in college. Hey, Jessica. Congrats on graduating. I'm super proud of you, and I wish you the best of luck in your future. You have been the best Koala sister, and I love you so much. Hi Jessica, I just wanted to tell you congratulations for graduating and you finally get to go to college, woo! Um, you have been an amazing role model for me this year because you're really funny and pretty and smart and nice and playing soccer with you for this season was really amazing and I made some great memories with you on the team and I'm really grateful for that. So I know wherever you go next year, you'll be really successful because you have just amazing qualities about you. So yeah, congratulations. Happy graduation, Jessica. I'm really proud of you. Have fun at college. Hey, Valentina and Jessica. You two were amazing mock trial attorneys and you both showed me the ropes of what it means to be a mock trial attorney. But more than that, you 
are two amazing friends who I've made some pretty great memories with. I'm really going to miss both of you next year. Hi Val, congrats. I know that wherever you go, you're gonna do great. Love you. Hey Val, I just wanted to say congratulations. I wish you the best of luck in college. I know you're gonna be an amazing attorney one day. You and everybody on the mock trail team have inspired me so much. And thank you for being such a good friend and role model to me. Hi Teresa, I just wanted to say congrats. I know that you've worked really hard and I love seeing what you come up with with your art. It's beautiful and I know you're gonna do really great things. And I just, you're always gonna be in my prayers. And even though we only got one year, you're definitely someone I look up to. And just thank you for being a great cool sister and congrats. Hi Teresa, it's Talia. And I wanted to say happy graduation. You're so kind and talented and I love your art and you're gonna go very far in life and I'm so proud of you. Bridget, it's Christine. Um, I just wanted to say that I'm so proud of you for completing your senior year and um, that I know that wherever you go in life that you're going to be super successful. Um, you're super smart and um, I'm proud of you. So I hope you have a good quarantine graduation and hopefully when this is all over you can have an actual graduation but um yeah i'm really proud of you bye congratulations bridget hope you have fun at college hi bridget i loved having you as my senior and i miss you so much i wish you the best hi lola it's your sophomore sister jenny here i am so proud of you for getting into laverne and i hope you have a great time in college bye good luck Congrats, Sonia and Nova. I'm so proud of you. Hey, Nancy. I just wanted to say that I hope you have a great graduation ceremony and that you were an amazing senior to have in my cool family this year. Hi, Nancy. Congrats on your graduation. I just wanted to say that I'm really proud of being able to call you my senior sister, and I hope that you are proud of the work you've done at Connolly. Congratulations again. Hey Nancy, it was so nice meeting you this year. I just want to say congratulations on graduating and good luck in college. Hi Paige, I just want to say congratulations and good luck on your future endeavors and in college. Congratulations Paige! Good luck in college, I love you! Congratulations Chloe, I love you and I miss you so much. Hey Chloe, um, I just want to say congratulations on graduating and I just want to say like you are such an amazing person and I remember the first time I met you was at volleyball camp um, freshman before freshman year and you were just so like had such an amazing energy and I remember you talking about like oh like your bangs didn't look good but I think they look great on you Chloe. And yeah, I just hope that you have a great college experience and I wish you the best of luck in your future endeavors. Hey Danny, it's your sister Penelope. Thanks for always being such a good role model to me and being the best Koala sister ever. I hope you have a really great year in college and I know you'll do great. Happy graduation, love you. Anyways, congratulations. I miss you so much and I'm actually so proud of you. I miss, I love you so much, Danny. I love you so much. I'm so proud of you. You're gonna do so good wherever you go and keep in touch, even though I know where you talk, but I'm missing in person. I love you. Hey, Marissa. It was amazing having you in Algebra 2 last year, and it was amazing having you in psychology this past year. You are an amazing friend, and I wish you all the best in whatever you do. Hey Marissa, it was so fun playing softball with you this year. I just want to say congratulations on graduating and good luck in college. Congratulations Regina! I just want to say thank you so much for welcoming me into Connolly and that I wish you the best of luck as you face your very bright future that's ahead of you. Bye! Hi Regina, Chelsea here. I just wanted to let you know that I hope you're doing well and congratulations on graduation and I wish you the best of luck for next year. Hey Sarah, I just wanted to say congratulations. I wish you the best of luck in college. Thank you for being an amazing koala sister and such a great friend. Bye. You have been honestly one of my closest friends at Connolly ever. 
and I'm so glad that I got a chance to get to know you and to meet you and to form our awesome club together, the Asian Appreciation Club. And you're just so easy to talk to and I'm gonna miss all the times where we were dying of laughter in Mr. Marshall's class and even Ms. Spider's class and I'm gonna miss you and everything that we did together and I hope that we could hang out soon and everything and I wish you the best of luck in college but honestly you even need luck because you're already so smart. Bye. Congratulations today. Congratulations Maya. I'm so proud of you guys. Happy graduation. Congratulations, Janae. I am so proud of you and all that you've done. Thank you so much for all that you've done for me and our Connolly family, of course. And especially throughout mock trial and just throughout school and stuff, you've always been there for me whenever I needed you. And thank you so much. And I'm so excited to see what life has for you. Hi, Janae. Uh, congratulations on graduating. Yay. I can't really clap right now because my hand's holding the phone, but uh, you know what I mean. So anyway, Good luck with college. Don't fail. I trust you, Janae. And I love you. Good luck. Hi, Cassie. Congrats. Um, I'm really proud of you being my cool sister for all you've done and all you've had to work for. I know it's a lot of, a lot of, you know, it's t it's tough. So I'm really proud, and I wish you the absolute best wherever you go. You're always in my prayers, and congrats. Hey Cassie, I just want to say thank you for always being such a good friend and just being a very genuine person and I know that your future is so bright and I can't wait to see you do amazing things. Hi Ali, congratulations on graduating this year. Thanks for being an awesome koala sister to me. Congratulations Ali, I'm so proud of you and I love you so much and you have no idea how much I'm going to miss you because you've literally been such a solid friend this year and I'm so lucky to have you. I love you. Hey Nina, I just wanted to say congratulations on all the hard work that you've put into this year. I know that you've done so much for Connolly working on CCTV and that you also had to do all of your sports and graduating early from Connolly. I'm so glad that you get to walk down with the other girls though. I'm really proud of you for doing all that extra work. Have a good time in college. Love you. Hey Nina, I just want to say congratulations on graduating, and I know you're going to do great things in the future. Thank you for making my freshman year one of the best, and I love you. Hi Nina, um, I just want to say congratulations on graduating. You'll always have a special place in my heart since we attended Blessed Sacrament together. And I thought it was so cool that we also went to Connolly, and I just wish you the best of luck in everything in life. And yeah, I'm gonna miss you. Bye. Hey Nina, congrats on your graduation. Hey Nina, we're so proud of you for graduating and we wish we could be there with you, but we're loving you virtually. We love you and we miss you and we know you're gonna do great in college. Love you, Nina. Love you. Love you. Hey Sarah, I just wanted to say congratulations. I wish you the best of luck in college. I'm really gonna miss our Spanish classes and stressing out before tests and over homework. Thank you for being an amazing friend. Bye. Congratulations, Sarah and Catherine. Thank you guys for always being there to guide me. Congratulations, Don. I know that you'll do great in college and we'll all miss you very much. Hey Donna, congratulations on graduating this year. I'm so proud of you. I'm so grateful that I got to be in your Koala family. And just thank you for being so supportive and just overall being a great friend. I wish you the best of luck in your future and I love you. Hi Alyssa. I'm so glad that we got the chance to meet each other in freshman year. And I'm so glad, I'm even happier that we got a chance to know each other more this year. And I'm just so grateful to have you in my life. You're such a hilarious person and so caring too. Like you always think about others and I'm really proud of you. for graduating and I hope that you get to do everything that you've always wanted to do in the future. I love you and I hope that we can hang out soon. Hey Alyssa, I just wanted to say congratulations. I wish you the best of luck in college. 
and thank you for being such an amazing koala sister. Bye. Hey Alyssa, I just want to say congratulations and just thank you for being so kind to me and I remember some good memories I have with you was just talking after soccer practice and just having really good conversations with each other and you were just always such a nice person and I know that your future will be so bright because you are an amazing person. Love you, congratulations. Hi class of 2020, I wanted to dedicate a verse of a song called My Wish by Rascal Flats to you. My wish for you is that this life becomes all you want it to. Your dreams stay big and your worries stay small. You never need to carry more than you can hold. And while you're out there, getting where you're getting to, I hope you know that someone loves you and wants the same things too. Congratulations on your achievements. Best wishes in college and also your future endeavors. Hi seniors, congratulations. And may God bless you on your next adventure. Congratulations, class of 2020. Congratulations, class of 2020. I remember telling you what a great number your, your class had, 2020. Well, it will be a memorable year for lots of reasons. Um, the closing of Connolly, the pandemic, but I celebrate that it was the year you guys graduated and you have been nothing but gracious and caring and resilient and optimistic through all this, and that will serve you well in life. Congratulations. Graduates, express your inner confidence, trust in yourself, spread your wings, and enjoy your new life. Congratulations, 2020. Hi, class of 2020. Mrs. Townsend here. Congratulations. Hello. Oh, come on, you can do better than that. Hello. Not as good as your daughters, but not bad, I will say that. Good afternoon, dear families and dear friends of the Cornelia Connolly School of the Holy Child, class of 2020 graduating seniors. My name is Jacqueline Quinona Sinkowski, and it has been my great honor and my great privilege to have served you and your daughters as head of school. We, the faculty, staff, and seniors, are truly blessed to have you with us today as we celebrate a life milestone that almost didn't happen. And so before we begin our celebration ceremony, I would like to bring to your attention the two large television screens on each side of our stage. These screens will show the lovely faces of three of our seniors who could not physically be with us today. One of our seniors, Chris Nguyen, joins us from Downey, while two other seniors, Nancy Xiao and Regina Zhao, join us from China, where it is 7 a.m. in the morning there. When their names are read today, during the distribution of diplomas, please take note of their beautiful image on screen. Now, please allow me to remind you of a few, of a few housekeeping rules. Given the current pandemic, I am asking that ma masks remain on any member of our seated audience. We have not asked our faculty, staff, special guest speakers, and graduates to wear masks, and so we ask that in an effort to keep them and you safe from illness, you will accommodate this request. I know that masks can get uncomfortable, and we are outside, accept acceptably distanced. So if you need to remove the mask for a moment of fresh air, please do so. I promise no one will mask shame you. Several of our graduating seniors are legacy students and will be receiving their diplomas from a Connolly alumni mother or sister. If you are one of those giving diplomas to a graduate, you may also remove your mask before the presentation so as not to look like a bank robber in all the photos. <laughs> Connolly's graduation is a beautiful and formal event. We ask your cooperation in order to assure that the spirit of this our final graduation exercises is preserved. As with all celebrations, we expect that when your specially Connolly girl, special Connolly girl's name is read, you will cheer loudly and with great joy because that's what this year has been about in spite of everything. I only ask that when you do, 
you applaud only after the entire graduate's name has been read and that you remain in your family cluster while doing so. We do have professional ph photographers on site. One of them is right over there. And they will capture every precious moment and make their photos available to you online at no charge. At the end of our graduation ceremony, the graduates will recess out, followed by the faculty and staff. Please remain in your seats until the final faculty or staff member has recessed out of the tent. I ask you now to make sure that your cell phone has been silenced. You're all doing that right now, I can see it. So that we may begin what will be a most memorable commencement exercise. Please let your hearts be filled with great joy. As we begin the faculty and staff procession, and most importantly, the graduate procession, led by the most reverend Bishop Kevin William Van, Bishop of the Diocese of Orange, and Mrs. Priscilla Forbes, Connolly Board of Trustees, Board Chair. Prior to the faculty procession, we are honored and blessed to have three former Connolly girls who will be our guest speakers walk in. When they do, please honor them as you would the graduates. Thank you, and we will see you on the other side. Connolly alumni, serving the Connolly community as registrar for one year, the one moving very quickly up there, from the Department of English and Social Studies, Ms. Selena Torres, two years of service, from the Department of Social Science and Director of Activities, Ms. Elise Ryder, two years of service, Theology Department Chair, Mrs. Mary Perez, three years of service. Director of the Tri-School uh, Theater Department at Servite, Mr. Frankie Maroney, four years of service. Director of Admissions, varsity soccer coach and alumni from the class of 2004, Mrs. Alicia Asatuno, four years of service. School guidance counselor, Mrs. Carolyn Tran Ryan, four years of service. Director of Finance, Rosemary Melissa, four years of service. Miss Alyssa is joining us via Instagram. And Mr. Juniman, please stop where you are, sir. Thank you. Department of Math, Horticulture, and our golf coach, Mr. David Juniman, five years of service. Standing somewhere in the back, by the way, is our facilities associate, Mr. Jose Guzman, five years of service. Music director over here. Where are you, Mr. Arnold? Oh, there you are. <laughs> Music director, Mr. Jonathan Arnold, six years of service, and now he's going to keep walking, I think. Thank you, Mr. Arnold. English 
I'm sorry, Science Department Chair, Academic Decathlon, Mr. Franklin Parmar, six years of service. English Department Chair, Mock Trial Coach, Mrs. Dorothy Morris, six years of service. Director of Communications and mother of a Connolly freshman, Mrs. Cynthia Aurelius, seven years of service. The most incredible woman on the planet, the assistant to the head of school, and proud mother of one of our graduates, Miss Maria Teresa Avila, 12 years of service. From the Department of Theology and Campus Minister, Kathy Townsend, has nine years of service. Mrs. Townsend is unable to be with us today, but she is watching via live stream. From the World Language Department and Senior Class Advisor, none of this happens without her, Mrs. Gloria Cam, 13 years of service. Also working hard somewhere out there, Facilities Director, Mr. Francisco Giles, 15 years of service. Social Science Department Chair, Mr. Matthew Marshall, 15 years of service. Hold on there, Akisha. Trying to find you here. You guys are out of order. Um, 18 years of service, Akisha Walker. <laughs> Assistant Director of Finance and aunt of an alumna, Mrs. Cheryl Kerwich, 16 years of service. Former science department chair and math teacher, visiting us from Santa Margarita, Mrs. Helen Wagner, 16 years of service. Art department chair and alumni from the class of 1972, and one of your special guest speakers today, Mrs. Pamela Toomey, 18 years of service. Director of Information Technology, Mr. Larry Seeley, 20 years of service. Math Department Chair, father of a Connolly freshman, Mr. Michael Ambrose, 22 years of service. World Language Department Chair, Miss Diane Seeley, 34 years of service. And finally, last but not least, but she is the shortest, Athletic Director, Ms. Timory Sullivan, Coach Henry, 43 years of service. faculty and staff for your years of dedication and service to our community. We thank you. And now, the moment you have all been waiting for. After that phone goes on, it's okay. We love you. The moment you have all been waiting for, led by Bishop Kevin Van and Mrs. Priscilla Forbes, please rise for the Cornelia Connolly School of the Holy Child graduating class of 2020.
aren't they lovely? Socially distancing makes for a long procession, doesn't it? <laughs> Today we are very blessed to have a very special friend to Connolly. Bishop Kevin William Van has been serving the Diocese of Orange as bishop since 2012. And over the years, Bishop Van has joined our communities to, cele to celebrate Mass. And whenever he is here, he speaks of his great love for our whole community and especially our students. In fact, I tease him sometimes and tell him that he is one of the finest Connolly alums I've ever met. <laughs> it gives me great pleasure to welcome Bishop Van to our celebration and to invite him to lead us in our invocation. Bishop Van. <laughs> You know, girls, what I brought with me is you gave me this for my birthday a few years ago. Some of you are in that and you're all autographed. So as my memory of all of you, this is in my office. I brought it with me today to thank you for that. You know, I, I see in the office, uh, I, I've heard people say I'm, I'm a Connolly girl. I, I say, well, I'm a Connolly bishop, maybe you could say that. <laughs> I. I will be here this fall, eight years. And so maybe I can say with that eight years, and along being part of tri-school now, I'm that, that I have like eight years of service like other, some others. So I'm grateful to be part of that, part of this community and your heritage. And I know the motto is lead, inspire, and serve. And I know that's how you live, how you are, and what you will take with you. What I'd ask you to think about today at this significant graduation is also the motto of uh, Father Junipero Serra, that really the founder of the diocese and one of the California missions, it's, you know, siempre adelante, we go ahead. We look ahead. And you take with you the heritage of Mother Connolly, how that shaped and formed you, and you in turn, by your lives and your witness, and how you are, will shape and form others for the good in Christian lives. So I'm really grateful to be part of that. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. Almighty God, we give you thanks for this momentous occasion. And we gather to celebrate the accomplishments of these 39 young women who have earned the privilege of being called Connolly graduates. Thank you for the faculty and staff who have taught and served this class with diligence and patience. Thank you for you, the parents, the family members, and friends who have supported them in good times and in bad. We ask you, Lord, to watch over them as they enter the next stage of their vocations. Keep them far from the dangers and temptations of this world, far from anger, sloth, and doubt. Send your spirit upon them, and instead cultivate seeds of kindness, forgiveness, and love. And girls, I sense that in you. I really do. Let them be shining lights to bring your message of joy to all, secure in the knowledge that you walk before them wherever they go. We ask this through the intercession of your saints, those known through the church and those countless ones dear to our hearts, long gone but who watch over us still, most especially through the prayers of our venerable mother Cornelia Connolly, whose example of faith, joy, and action inspire us all. Amen. And in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and the Holy Spirit, and Mother Connolly, pray for us. Amen. Amen. Wow, it's happening. All right. Um, good afternoon, the Most Reverend Bishop Van, Mrs. Sinkowski. Board Chair Mrs. Priscilla Forbes, faculty, staff, family, and most importantly, my sisters. I'm so proud of all of you. Can you believe it? Here we are in our white dresses. If you don't know me already, my name is Noelle Morani, 
and I am beyond honored and a little nervous to be standing in front of you all today. While it may not be exactly how we pictured it, we're all here. We're living and breathing in this moment, in person, celebrating the last four years of our graduates, and in spirit, almost 60 years of strong women that came before us. Now, I'm not oblivious. I know lately it's hard to have that celebratory mindset given the current circumstances. I never got to see my friends sparkle in their prom dresses. I didn't know that my last morning hot chocolate on the senior locker room couch would be the last one. Also, I'm pretty sure I'm one of the only 18-year-olds who still doesn't have her license because COVID canceled my test. But you all know it's been difficult. I'm certain every one of us here has had to adapt to the circumstances. I'm just stating the obvious. Sometimes, though, I think it's the not so obvious that's more important. In this situation, it's essential to recognize that the things that pull us together are far stronger than the things that pull us apart. So what pulls these ladies together, besides the smell of burnt microwave popcorn every single break? Our undeniable relentlessness. Connolly girls take the difficult, the challenge, the hurt, and turn it into something beautiful. Whether on the field, the mock trial courtroom, the stage, or any other setting, you can tell which ones are the Connolly girls. They're the ones who achieve their goals even when people tell them that they can't. They're the ones who show kindness to all even when sometimes it's not reciprocated. They're the ones who put in the extra work even when there's no word for doing so. COVID, the closure of the school, and then any other upcoming challenges don't stand a chance against the spirit of this senior class. Not a single chance. While each and every one of these girls in front of you is an extremely talented individual, I believe our strength and energy derive from our sisterhood and unity. Growing up with three brothers and only having guy friends in middle school, I really had no clue what sisterhood meant. But as I commenced my first day at Connolly, it became immediately evident. This is the senior class that fits everybody on a single group chat, talking about anything and everything. This is the class that pulled off staging the Twilight Zone, even with our 20-minute transitions. This is the class that turned our whole entire campus into a circus overnight, with almost no sleep. The memories made, lessons learned, and accomplishments achieved will always be ingrained in who we are, regardless if there's a building here to show it or not. I truly believe our spirit, coupled with direction from God, will allow us to provoke positive change, wherever we end up. Our school is made up of artists, dancers, leaders, mathematicians, scientists, writers, and the list goes on, all of whom can make a contribution in their own way. As the, last, as the last Caudalie alumni, it is our responsibility to keep what we've learned and apply it. It is our responsibility to feel a sense of urgency to make a difference in our future communities, big or small. It is our responsibility to hold ourselves high and to hold each other even higher. Ladies, this ceremony is our greeting scene. Those who had Mrs. Moore's sophomore year know what I'm talking about. But for those of you who didn't, I'll fill you in. During one of the books we read, Sir Gwain and the Green Knight, Sir Gwain is putting on his armor, getting ready for battle. We learn that this preparation for battle is called the greeting scene. In simple terms, it's that great moment in all the superhero movies with dramatic music as they prepare to go into battle, you know, with the war paint, they're loading their weapons, all that stuff. Since that class where we learned about the greeting scene, I've been waiting for mine. And this is it. Our white dresses are the armor. Our family and friends here and our supporters are sitting at the edge of their seat, ready to watch us prevail. And the diploma that's soon going to be in your hand that is the ultimate weapon, for it represents years of education, growth, and strength. The question is, what are you going to do with it? What are we going to do with it? Thank you.
Thank you, Noel. And now it's that time, that special moment. So as Mrs. Priscilla Forbes and Bishop Kevin Van make their way to the center of the tent, I will remind our audience and our students that this is for the greater honor and glory of God. And so I welcome you to the 56th annual distribution of diplomas and prizes for Cornelia Connolly School of the Holy Child in Anaheim, California on June 6, 2020. The following young women have satisfactorily completed the course of studies and are awarded the diplomas and medals of Cornelia Connolly School of the Holy Child, class of 2020. Ladies, please rise. <laughs> this worked better in rehearsal. <laughs> Haley Athena Mary Adams, Miss Hannah Adams, Connolly Class of 2017, and sister to Haley, will present Haley with her diploma. Sarah Akhtar. Vanessa Maria Alarcon. Miss Al Isabel Alarcon, Conley class of 2014, and sister to Vanessa, will present Vanessa with her diploma. <laughs> Emily Patricia Arndt, Mrs. Angela Arndt, Connolly class of 1985, and Emily's mother. Miss Miranda Arndt, Connolly class of 2017, and Emily's sister, and Mr. Thomas Arndt, member of the Connolly Board of Trustees, and Emily's father will present Emily with her diploma. <laughs> Michaela Luna Corella. Janae Grace DeGrood. Grace Fidelis Edwards. Teresa Marie Devera Enriquez. Cassandra Marie Ferguson. <laughs> Haley Noel Lauren Frogner. Allison Hernandez, Miss Brianna Hernandez, Connolly class of 2018, and Allison's sister will present Allison with her diploma.
Huang Kim Hun. Catherine Ann Hindman. Dip <laughs> Diploma bearer Monica Hindman is Catherine's sister. Daisy Marie Ibarra. <laughs> Anya Francesca Arce Ibasco. Alyssa Marie Sanchez Hohola. Chelsea Lee. Kun Daisy Lien. Abriana Sophia Mandry. <laughs> Rayanne May Marcial. Nina Menzagopian. <laughs> Noel Alyssa Morani. <laughs> Lucia Maria Munoz. <laughs> Diploma bearer Noemi Munoz is Lucia's younger sister. On screen, Chris Elizabeth Nguyen. <laughs> Mr. David Lobato, Chris's grandfather, united in spirit with his wife, the late Mrs. Lobato, Chris's grandmother, have presented Chris with her diploma. <laughs> Gun Tram Chloe Nguyen. Maya Nicole Ordonez. <laughs> Jessica Ortiz. <laughs> Diploma bearer Nicole Ortiz is Jessica's younger sister. Sarah Dion Patton. Valentina Perez. <laughs> Teresa Louise Perry. Mrs. Louise Perry, Connolly class of 1986, and Teresa's mother will present Teresa with her diploma. Teresa's older sisters are also Connolly girls.
Bridget Riley. Donna Nicole Roque. Maria Lola Searcy. On screen, Yi Yi Nancy Shao, Mr. Yanan Seven Shao, the father of Yi Yi, will be presenting his daughter with her diploma in Shanghai, China. <laughs> Paige Amber Showalter, Miss Megan Showalter, Connolly Class of 2008, and Miss Brooke Showalter, Connolly Class of 2011, and Paige's sisters will present Paige with her diploma. Chloe Marie Webb. <laughs> Chloe is the granddaughter of a Connolly alum, Miss Wendy Webb, who is unable to be with us today. Daniela Teresa Savala Avila. <laughs> Marisa Zuniga Savala. On screen, Biting Regina Zhao, Mrs. Cho Mei Chen, the parent of Biting, will be presenting her daughter Biting with her diploma in Chuhai, China. I'm sure I butchered that. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, I would like to present to you and to ask that you join me in congratulating the Connolly Class of 2020. Ladies. Ladies, please be seated. Good afternoon, Bishop Van, Mrs. Forbes. I got this, yeah, I got this. <sighs> Good afternoon, Bishop Van, Mrs. Forbes, Mrs. Sinkowski, faculty and staff, families, my fellow koalas, and last but certainly not least, the class of 2020. To be honest, I've been avoiding writing this speech. I've been avoiding writing the last chapter of our Connolly experience. And today is the final page. These past four years, we have all written our own stories. We have had our struggles, our joyous moments, and of course, we have shared many sad moments as well. This day may be the happiest and saddest day yet. 
but we are here to celebrate you, the class of 2020, the class that has gone through it all and persevered together. And that's what we call a sisterhood. If there's one thing to know about this group of graduates, it is that we have each other's backs. I just said that, I'm sorry. Oh. As our founder's mother Connolly said, actions, not words. You are the example of the school's motto. I've truly seen you lead, serve, and inspire. Without a doubt, I know the future holds success for people like you. Connolly is no ordinary high school. It's not even an ordinary all-girls Catholic school. It's a school where women become independent, cherished, and the best versions of themselves. This school has taught us all who God made us to be. Looking back now, Connolly is not just a school. We all know it is much more. Though it is out of our hands, this closing can be heartbreaking. All we can do now is celebrate the many memories cherished here and seek to create close-knit communities wherever we go. Our time here at Connolly has been a roller coaster. From freshman year, going on a retreat with total strangers, who we now call our sisters, to sophomore year, when our schoolwork became more serious, to our junior year, surviving AP, SAT, and ACT testing, and lastly, senior year, when we all diagnosed ourselves with senioritis. Though our senior year has been cut short, overall, we have had a memorable three and a half years here at Connolly. We have shown not only the underclassmen, but ourselves, that it is possible to achieve greatness with the support of sisters, you, the class of 2020, have all been there for each other since day one. I can honestly say you've all counted on each other like one, two, three. That's what makes our class unique. Our class has so many different personalities, but we are all sisters. Mother Connolly said, do you realize the privilege of giving to God? It is yours at every moment. It has been a privilege for us to attend this school, a privilege to be standing here today. And I want you to remember this privilege, the privilege of attending a Catholic school, the privilege of being surrounded by such supportive people, and the privilege of the four years spent here. I don't want you to forget your home where you spent thousands of hours or to forget the people that contributed to this home and thank them. Thank them for their sacrifice, for their generosity, and their support. If there's one thing I want you to leave with, it is this. The word legacy can mean many things, one of which is leaving an impact that others carry on. Because Connolly is closing, the legacy ends here. Or does it? This legacy lives on. Everything Connolly has given us and taught us, we will live out every day of our lives as our fellow alumni have done for the last 59 years. We will always stand out because of where we come from. Once a Connolly girl, forever a Connolly girl. Congratulations to the class of 2020. Ladies, please rise.
as graduating young women here today, we would not have achieved all we have achieved. We would not have experienced all we have experienced. And we would not have grown into wonderful, prepared, intelligent, and kind individuals we are without, su without the support and care of our loving families. We have a baccalaureate tradition here at Connolly that we are unable to participate in this year. This tradition allows us a moment to express our appreciation for all the sacrifices made by our families in order for us to have received our excellent Connolly education in a loving environment. Sisters, please show your gratitude. Hi, <laughs> Mrs. Sinkowski doesn't know this is happening. Sorry, a few seconds. <laughs> As we express our gratitude to our parents, we cannot leave today without thanking another very important person in our lives. Mrs. Sinkowski is very near and dear to all of us here today. And without her, none of our graduation festivities would have been possible. I would like to recognize her parent never-ending love and care for all of us here at Connolly. From her first day as our English teacher in our second semester of freshman year to today, our last day on this campus at the beautiful, beautiful ceremony she has organized for us. Mrs. Sinkowski, you truly embody what it means to lead, serve, and inspire. You truly are an inspiration for all, from English teacher to dean of students, and now our lovely head of school in just four years you truly taught us to be eager for knowledge, to show compassion for others, to stay true to ourselves while following our dreams, and of course, how to find the perfect pair of heels to match every outfit. <laughs> Thank you from the bottom of our hearts for every ounce of love and wisdom you have poured out on all of us Connolly girls. We will remember your kindness, joy, and humor forever. And we will take all you have taught us wherever we go in life. My sisters and I are so honored to have shared our four years here with you. And now you get to graduate from Connolly with us. Thank you for giving us the world. On behalf of all of my Connolly sisters, we love you, Mrs. Sinkowski. 
Once a Conley girl, always a Conley girl. Thank you. Thank you so very much. Some people have said to me, I did not know this was happening. I would have put on a lot more eyeliner had I known. And you know this is being televised, right? Like, I'm going to look like this all over the world, just so you know. Um, somebody said to me recently, thank you for making this happen. I did not make this happen. I just said yes a lot. I said yes to this role. I said yes to this graduation. But there were so many other people, Mrs. Cam, Mrs. Aurelius, Mrs. Walker, um, Mrs. Perez, Mrs. Townsend, they all made this happen. Our whole faculty and staff made this happen. You made this happen. You've done an incredible job with your beautiful daughters. Thank you. And now we'll move on. At every commencement exercise, we have a cherished alumni, Connolly speaker, who speaks to our young graduates about the joys of being forever a Connolly girl. This year is special. Given that this is our final year, we wanted to do something a little bit different. And so we invited five different Connolly women who represent one of the decades in which Connolly has stood a beacon of rigorous academics in a loving and supportive environment. In addition to speaking here today, each Connolly girl has chosen a song that will lead them to the podium. Each song represents for them their time here at Connolly. Now, I know that many of you are doing the math and saying, wait a minute, hasn't Connolly been here for nearly 60 years? Why only five speakers? Well. You have already heard from this decade's illustrious speakers, Noel Marani and Daisy Ibarra. They beautifully represented the years from 2011 to 2020. So now I have the pleasure of introducing you to a beautiful young woman, wife, mother, director of admissions, and varsity soccer coach here at Connolly, the alumni speaker representing the decade from 2000 to 2010, from the class of 2004, Mrs. Ali Asatuno. So I'm pretty sure No Doubt didn't write I'm Just a Girl about Connolly Girls, but Gwen Stefani was wearing a t-shirt that said Anaheim on it in the music video, so who knows? Maybe they were inspired by a group of bold, confident girls, a group of Connolly Girls. I don't know. We may never know. And if you're wondering why I chose a song whose lyrics seem to diminish the female perspective, I'll refer you to the three-page persuasive essay I wrote for Miss Ernest explaining how the song is satirical in nature and would actually have functioned as an anthem of empowerment for a class song as a group of young women who were determined to show the world just what we were capable of. <laughs> I wrote that essay. Now, 20 years later, you are the ones ready to show the world just what you're capable of. You girls have worked so hard, so hard. And just this year, you've overcome challenge after unforeseen challenge. As I said to you at the Honors Assembly, I know you are ready for whatever comes next. Now that you have completed high school, some of you in three years, and literally overcome a worldwide pandemic, I hope that you truly believe that you got this. Because when I think back to my Connolly graduation in 2004, I remember feeling so ready for the world when I sat on that same stage. Well, actually a much smaller, less socially distant stage, but you know what I mean. My point is, I hope you feel ready too. Because when my friends and I graduated Connolly together as 17 and 18 year olds, and now we are 30 something year olds, we were ready. 
We've gone to college and grad school. We've gone through boyfriends and breakups, first jobs, first loves. We've had weddings and kids and careers, and we are still ready for whatever life throws at us. So I want to encourage you to draw upon that feeling of readiness when things get tough, kind of like they are now, and not unlike how they were 20 years ago. I know for many of you, the phrase Y2K doesn't mean anything, but for most of you who remember 199, you remember that people were freaking out. There was widespread fear, uncertainty, and anxiety because people really believed the world was gonna end in the year 2000. Well, guess what, girls? It didn't. There's fear right now, and uncertainty, and anxiety. But just like 20 years ago, the world is not going to end. This is a difficult time and a challenging time, but we are getting through it. You are getting through it. So in the future, when you get a challenging roommate, a difficult professor, a schedule you didn't want, a grade you don't think you deserved, or you find out it might take you a little longer than you thought to land your dream job, just remember the world is not going to end. Give yourself permission to take it easy for a while and know that you'll get through it. You girls have the smarts and the skills. You certainly have strength and determination. Mother Connolly encourages us to finish everything with courage and resolution, and I know you girls have that. But above all else, you have your faith, and that alone is enough to get you through anything. Remember also that you have your families and each other. There may be no better social network in the world than the one you build yourself and take with you everywhere you go. Rely on people when you need them, because it's okay to ask for help sometimes. So ladies, as you venture forth, no matter how tricky or uncertain a situation may seem, the world is not going to end, I promise you. No matter what, and sometimes that might be a no matter who, please just remember, believe in yourselves, stay true to yourselves, and stay friends with each other. May the Lord bless you and keep you. Congratulations. Thank you, Mrs. Asatuno. She's such a great speaker. I am now honored to present to you another Connolly girl, Connolly graduation speaker, representing the decade from 1990 to 1999. Wife, mother, clinical psychologist, and graduate of the class of 1997, please welcome Dr. Nicole Benedicto Murillo. Another turning point, a fork stuck in the road. Time grabs you by the rest, directs you where to go. Good afternoon, ladies. I am so happy to be here with all of you today. I am incredibly proud to call myself a koala. And I'm honored to welcome the class of 2020 into this amazing legacy of women. When you go to graduate school for psychology, you participate in a great deal of self-reflection. After all, how can you expect others to look inward without first doing it yourself? It was during this reflective process that I first learned about the concept of the ongoing process of becoming. It's this idea that who we are is not determined by fate or circumstance, and that there is no solid self. Rather, as a person, I am constantly being defined by my experiences. As a person, I am flexible and capable of an enormous amount of experience and growth. I cannot be categorized. I am never truly formed. I am always becoming. As I was preparing to speak to you today, I was struck by the impact that my four years at Connolly had on my own ongoing process of becoming. It was in these locker rooms and lunch tables and classrooms and fields that my sense of self was formed and molded. I didn't suddenly discover my identity. Rather, the richness of my experiences and the women with whom I shared them shaped my openness and ability to take on new experiences in the future. When I took a chance and directed my first class play, if you can call it a Brady Bunch of play, I learned that I was creative. When I signed up for a freshman trip to Paris with people I didn't really know, I learned that I was adventurous. When I cried and struggled through AP bio and chemistry, I learned that I wasn't good at everything. <laughs> when I asked hard questions in religion class, I learned how to trust God. 
when I sat around a table and discussed Hester Prynne and the trial of O.J. Simpson, which is what we talked about every day when I was here, I learned that my opinions were important, and I also learned how to listen. Through my experience with my Connolly sisters, I learned that I was funny and sensitive and empathetic, maybe to a fault. I learned to laugh without restraint and that to ugly cry was the only way I knew how to cry. I also learned that what I valued most in my relationships with others, kindness and authenticity. So looking at your faces today, I see your memories and your formation, and I want you to know how profoundly lucky you are to have had this experience with the women next to you, because it is like no other you will ever have. As you embark on this next chapter of your journey, my hope and prayer for you is to accept your ongoing process of becoming. I urge you to seek out every experience and to embrace all your abilities and inabilities. Do not be afraid to make choices because your discoveries and rediscoveries will all contrib contribute to the amazing women you already are. In our world today where categories and labels are used to divide us, you have been given the gift of a Connolly education that has taught you that every part of you as a woman is unique and powerful. You are able to transcend any circumstance in your own way because you've been allowed to grow and learn in this sacred place. Continue to become my Connolly sisters. It is in your becoming that the spirit of Cornelia Connolly will live on. Congratulations. Ladies, you are part of an incredible legacy. Thank you, Dr. Murillo. I can't think of our next Connolly girl without smiling because she's pretty funny. One of the kindest, funniest, and joyous Connolly girls I have had the pleasure of knowing. She is a wife, a mother. She is the business manager of Tri-School Theater. She is a dear friend and Connolly representative of the decade from 1980 to 1989, and a graduate of the class of 1980. Please welcome Mrs. Patty Bueller. It took a pandemic to get a tent. We didn't even have a tent. We were stuffed on benches and we had to sit out in the sun for four hours, I think. Um, but wow, Sting really knew what he was doing 40 years ago when he came out with that song, Don't Stand So Close to Me, during this socially distanced graduation. The last month has been sentimental for me, following all of your social media um, posts on your senior spotlights. It got me thinking of some favorite memories and happiest times. The Conley Beach Day totally comes to mind when, yes, even 40 years ago, we'd get on a bus and we'd head to Corona Del Mar and there'd be 400 girls on the beach. <laughs> also, I was comforted to know that nothing's really changed. We were the first class who adopted the koala as our mascot in our freshman year. There, we had class plays, spirit week, sports, big sister, little sisters, class trips, father-daughter dances, junior ring ceremony, many dances with our sister and brother schools, and our famous powder puff football games, which we played on this field with our brothers from Servite as our coaches, which I don't think that was a good idea. Um, but I'm also relieved to know that um, it's, um, we're probably happy that we didn't have social media and videos all back in our high school years. <laughs> it was my days at Conley as a student when a famous little blonde spitfire became our coach. Coach Sullivan, although you all know her as Coach Henry, and I'm sure every gray hair on her head was from our class. We tested her patience every day and punishments like painting the lines on the basketball court was kind of fun. And secretly we loved it because together we did it in solidarity and in sisterhood. Plus it was getting out of class. And um, Coach, just for the record, Cotta Waller and I, we, we did pretty good. <laughs> All kidding aside, I encountered this um, incredible sisterhood as a teenager where we had each other's backs, growing up together and spending our, all our free time as a family. And then after we all graduated, we went on our separate ways. 
And then it all seemed like we all came back together again, um, important junctures of our lives um, when we needed our Conley sisters the most. We were in each other's weddings, godparents to each other's children, for each other's children, and then continued, as time continued to pass on, it was the Conley girls who were always there when we lost a parent, when a child got sick, or we had other difficult times in our lives. You could always look back and see that Conley was in the house. 11, and then also 11 years ago, I came back to Conley working with the tri-school students. It has been a blessing to me, and I've always had a, it, the Conley girl has always had a special place in my heart, um, and I always kind of put them at the top of my list of my favorites. The koala bear and the Conley stickers will remain in my office forever in the tri-school office, and you'll always be a part of our history. So as a Conley girl from the class of 1980, I want to encourage the class of 2020 to keep the sisterhood going. As, as, the, last, as the last class of Cornelia Conley, we are here for you, but we look to you to keep the spirit alive. You are the beginning of an exciting new chapter, and it's the girls sitting right next to you now that will be there for your highs and for your lows. These past four years have planted the deep seeds of sisterhood that you will forever be a part of. Best of luck, class of 2020, and go koalas. <laughs> I told you she was funny. Thank you, Patty. Our next Conley girl can only be described as warm, supportive, and extremely talented. A dear friend with whom I have had the pleasure of working with for the past four years, though she has been an educator here for the past 18 years. She is a wife and a mother and a devoted daughter. Please welcome the representative from the class of 1970, or the decade from 1970 to 1980, Mrs. Pamela Toomey, the class of 1972. Truthfully, I would give you permission to get up and dance. You know how much I love to dance. <laughs> okay, listen to Mrs. Sinkowski. Good afternoon, Most Reverend Bishop Van, Mrs. Forbes, Board of Trustees, Mrs. Sinkowski, who we are so blessed to have as our head of school. The best darn faculty and staff in the world. Families, and especially you, the class of 2020. Okay. Now, Mr. Arnold, remember I am your boss for at least another hour, so don't cue the music if I go too long, okay? <laughs> wow, we are family, and all my sisters are with me. Those lyrics were never truer than today. There you are, 39 amazing young women, who have been like daughters and sisters to me for the last three or four years. You've grown so much. There are also hundreds of our sisters who are sharing this remarkable moment through the miracle of live streaming. You know I'm old because I think live streaming is a miracle. <laughs> Sometimes I feel like a caterpillar, lumbering along just trying not to get stepped on, trying to figure out what's next on the horizon, and sometimes I wonder if the world has really changed at all. Maybe we should have been the Conley caterpillars. They eat enormous amounts of food, and that is certainly something we enjoy at Conley, and we're very proud of it. Breaking bread together has always been a Conley tradition, from shared lunches at beach day to the senior class's ice cream sandwiches. I've also heard a little rumor about brownies. You've had it all, you've shared it all. I sure wish all of you could have come and helped me write this speech. It has definitely been the hardest thing to do. Mostly because I didn't want to. Oh, I was happy to represent the decade of the 70s, but I definitely didn't want to write a speech for the last graduation of Conley. This most certainly was not my plan when this school year started but every adult here will tell you 
that some things in their lives weren't planned, or if they were, they didn't go according to the plan, and they've changed directions many times. I have struggled between mourning the loss of our beloved school and getting to see all of you blossom. This year has certainly proven that it's all of you that made Conley such a special place. Not the walls, not the roses, but all of you. It's the experiences, the traditions, the crying and the laughing that we've all shared together. Not much has really changed here at Conley, and yet everything has changed. In the 70s, we called it Senior Square, and you called it Mar Mary's Garden, but that doesn't really matter. What matters is that it was a little Conley haven of peace for all of us. My class all wanted to look like Twiggy in a miniskirt, but it's knowing your class continued our unofficial tra tradition of rolling your skirts, much to Mrs. Sinkowski's and the rest of your teacher's chagrin, but it was hilarious to watch. I know that Mother Conley would have loved seeing all of us at Beach Day or working together on class plays just the way her students did over 100 years ago. And why was that? Because she got it. She knew each of us desired to find ourselves in a way that couldn't be taught in a classroom. And so with her guidance, we now share this amazing group of young women who have learned so much together. I was very lucky to have a mom who gave up a lot for me to come here. And I am forever grateful to her for her love and her sacrifice. I know she's watching at home. Make sure to hug and thank your family today for this incredible gift of Conley. It's hard for me to believe that 48 years ago, I sat where you're sitting. Well, not right there, like Patty. I sat over there <laughs> in the sun at like 11 o'clock in the morning. We wore beautiful white gowns, gloves, and carried red roses just like you. I had plans. We all had plans, big plans, small plans. One thing you can always count on in life is that when you make plans, God laughs. Things change. The road's course becomes different than you thought. Remember, God will always be walking with you on your journey of life, no matter where that leads. And journey it is. In the past, we teachers have tearfully said goodbye to the graduates, congratulating the seniors, encouraging them on the big adventures ahead, and joyfully welcoming the juniors as the new seniors. But this is a very different year. This year, we're all graduating with you. For all of us right now, life is not the way it's supposed to be. Your class has faced so much this year, and yet when we saw you at the sports banquet or the art showcase at the prayer breakfast or at the baccalaureate mass, it was like you didn't miss a beat. The smiles of love on your faces for each other said it all. You've risen above it. You are strong, and you have each other. That bond of sisterhood will never be taken from you. To this day, my Conley sisters are some of my best friends who I love and respect deeply. We don't always get to choose the music life plays for us, but we sure can choose how we dance to it. And dance you have. Happiness can be found even in the darkest of times if we remember to turn on the ray of light, the hope that's within each of you. It's the way we cope with adversities that make all the difference. There are blessings all around us if we just look for them. I often wonder if God thought that this magical place we call Conley was selfishly being enjoyed by just us. And he really wants us to go out and share Cornelia's love and beliefs in places and communities that we would never have dreamed. We may not always go where we intended to go, but we end up where we need to be. Perhaps these new places are precisely where you need to be. This isn't really an ending, but a beginning to a new chapter, an exciting, amazing new chapter for all of us. As so many of you know, I am often stopped in my tracks just to ponder what brought all of us together in this place at this moment. Most of you had never met each other before you came to Conley. Some of you live in other counties. Many of you come from different faiths. Many of you had no idea what Conley was even all about before you got here. 
your teachers, your parents, why are all of us together at this moment? Certainly not just for graduation. There's a lesson for each of us to share and learn from each other, a lesson we may not even realize for years to come. Sadly, 48 years ago, I had hoped that there would no longer be a need for causes that involve racial injustice, but here we stand. Be the woman who stands up for what you believe in for every person who doesn't have a voice and has not found their own voice in society. Think of how far you've come because you supported one another. Support others, especially the women around you. Remember that as you rise, take others with you. Sometimes the lessons we learn take courage. Courage doesn't always roar like a lion. Sometimes courage is the quiet voice inside that says, I will try again tomorrow. I hope you always have eyes that see the best, a heart that forgives the worst, a mind that forgets the bad, and a soul that never loses faith in God or yourself. So remember that caterpillar? Just when the caterpillar thought the world was ending, she turned into a butterfly. Change is always filled with surprises, so embrace it. Whatever God, whatever God has planned for all of us, we are so blessed. God has allowed me to work with an amazing community, to be part of your life, and to be your sister. Congratulations to you, the incredible class of 2020. Welcome to the Sisterhood of Conley, and remember, you are always loved. Thank you, Mrs. Toomey. When this next Connolly girl was introduced to me today, I was told she is hilarious. That is an understatement. I have known her for two hours and feel as though we have known one another a lifetime. She is a mother. She is a Nona times three. She had a 35-year career, and now in her retirement for fun, she is a background actress, so you might get to see her on TV. And she represents half of a decade, from 1965 to 1969. Please welcome Miss Mary Schiavone. Come on, baby, like my fire. Come on, baby, like my fire. Try to set the night on fire. <laughs> I only picked that music because, well, first of all, uh, light my fire, like right now. I was thinking, well, I better not say that because I don't think we want to see any more people lighting fires anywhere. But the one thing, light, Bishop Van, you already addressed it, about being a light of the world. And that, of course, was going to be part of my speech. So thank you, Bishop Van, for giving half of my speech for me. That was my high school dance song, too. Oh, okay. Yeah, I know. Yeah, we're old. Yeah, <laughs> okay. <laughs> Hey, I'm turning 71 next week, so I'm really, but you know what? And I credit, every time I ever talk about the past or whatever, Conley always comes back because um, I graduated in 1967. Um, I started in 1963, and the, the, one of the first things that happened in November, on November 22nd, 1963, I was on the PE field. We were at PE, and one of the one of the uh, one of the third seniors, which is what we were called, we were called first seniors, second seniors, third seniors. And when I was here, we didn't have fourth seniors. We didn't have se a senior class. One of the members of the third senior class, and her name is Maureen O'Callaghan. Susan, do you remember her? You're right. Um, she came running out to the field to tell us that President Kennedy had been assassinated. So in my first, in my first year at Conley, we had to go through a very similar devastation that we're going through now in that President Kennedy was murdered viciously murdered. And so the sisterhood of, of, of our classmates, we, we really bonded together over that the same way you guys have. And I was listening also to um, 
uh, Noel, your speech was wonderful. I also had three brothers and no sisters, and I have all sons. I had two sons. <sighs> so I was like, I always wanted to sit. So when I came to Conley, and we, were, we had only 72 in our class, we, we formed quite a sisterhood, and we still have it. In fact, we were supposed to have a Zoom call last Sunday, and so our, somebody's internet, the person that was doing the Zoom call, or internet went down. So we have it rescheduled. And we had 25 people out of our class of 72 after 53 years that was going to get on that Zoom call. We had a 50-year reunion of our own, and um, uh, you know, because of Facebook, we're able to stay uh, in, really in touch. And I'm still super close friends with my best friends at Conley, and I'm sure that you guys are going to have the same experience. Um, also, Noel, I didn't get my driver's license either till I was 18, but that was only because my parents were strict and they wouldn't let me. So. <laughs> nothing to do with anything like that. And then when I listened to Daisy's speech, she's, she like took right notes right off my page. And that is actions, not words. In all of these years, Mother Conley's motto, it used to be a slogan on our blazer, and then I noticed you all have the, you all have the medals. I still have my medal. Um, that has carried me through my entire life. When I came to Conley in 1963, if I had gone to a co-ed school, like Modern Day or any of the other schools around here, I couldn't run for student body president or I couldn't run for treasurer. Can you believe that? Girls were not allowed to run for office that involved leadership or handling finances. Oh, what a message was that? What a message was that to women? But because I came to Conley, we didn't have to deal with it. We could have, I learned leadership, I learned sisterhood, I learned, well, I knew kindness, but living with three brothers sometimes is really hard to be kind. <laughs> Especially when my older brother became a priest, and so I had to be second. I had to be second fiddle to somebody who became a priest. So you know, I was like, okay, whatever. Um, but um, uh, the one thing I pretty much have covered everything that was on my notes. I was going to talk about what was what was different then, and I think I hit that. Also, too, as with we were we were out in the hot sun in the in the afternoon. So, uh, so I guess maybe social distancing isn't too bad. Um, but I just want to close by saying, although I'm, I've explained what was different when I was here, it's all still the same. And what, what, what the two things are the same are our sisterhood, the actions, not words. You know, and I went on to have a career in sales. I was in pharmaceutical sales uh, for uh, 12 years. I was the district sales manager. I was always the only girl on the management team for years. So, um, but, and, and in retirement, um, who would have thought that a few months after retirement, I have to stay home all day? And I live in Los Angeles, and so it's been pretty strict over there. And if you're 65 or over, you stay home. And the thing that really got me through it was the, the actions, not words part. I never really thought the actions meant sitting home on the couch, right? But actions, not words, means living with a purpose, living with a purpose that has to do with your Catholic faith, living with a purpose that live, means you live for the betterment of others, not yourself. When you live with purpose, no matter what happens in your life, you'll be able to manage and get through it. And having to sit at home for, uh, for somebody else went right back to what I learned here at Conley. And I will close right now by saying one thing. We are all Conley girls. Congratulations and the best of luck. Mwah. You're going to be great. Thank you, Mary. Last.
But certainly not least, our next Connolly girl is a dear friend who has been so incredibly supportive of our community. A sister of the Society of the Holy Child, member of the Connolly Board of Trustees, dear friend and representative of the very first graduating class of Cornelia Connolly School. Please welcome Sister Susan Slater, class of 1965. Not easy to be last, I don't think. Great talks, right? Well, one of my favorite memories of my time at Conley is what was later called the Tabletop Theater. As you probably know, my class was the first and only class um, when we first began in September of 1961. That's a long time ago. Our campus consisted of very few buildings compared to now. And yet when Christmas time came around the, um, that first year, the nuns and other faculty were not to be deterred. We were to have a proper Holy Child School Christmas pageant and concert. The only problem was we didn't have any auditorium. We didn't have any stage. We didn't even have a classroom big enough for the school and for the audience that was going to come. So we had our theater out in that between the classrooms of so that one classroom block that's on Broadway. That was our theater. And our stage were the Redwood picnic tables that were from the lunch area. And I have no memory of how we got up there, probably on the benches that went with those tables, but that's what we did. <clears throat> but I, what I do remember is that we had a wonderful evening a cool December evening with stars out, with uh, all of us carrying lighted candles and trying very hard not to light up the long hair of the people in front of us. <laughs> Somebody's almost did happen that way. But the reason I picked that example, I have lots of wonderful memories, and the reason I picked that one is because it exemplifies what I wanted to say to you, graduates of 2020. And that is, buildings do not make a school or even memories. People do. Now, that's probably not a, a new uh, thought to most of you. But I know for me, when I was on sabbatical several years ago in the Holy Land, I was lucky to get to do that, um, I realized what that meant in a new and special way. I and others in my program were thrilled to be there to walk in the footsteps of Jesus and visit the churches and the villages of the place where Jesus was. Um, and, but the program director was very wise, and he kept saying to us, remember to contemplate the living stones. And those were the men and women and children who lived there today, who were the people carrying on all those teachings and traditions of their faiths and cultures. So today, I want to ask you, um, to join all the graduates that we've had over these 50-some years and ask you, class of 2020, to be part, join all of us in being living stones of Conley. <clears throat> Excuse me. It doesn't really matter what the material is. Sometimes I think I should have said living bricks because we don't really have stones in our buildings, but be what it is. Whatever the material, I, I find it personally very difficult to be here today and realize this is the last graduation. I find it difficult to think of what, that the campus and the school will no longer be here. But I ask you to join me and all of us in really providing a note of joy by carrying on what you so very much loved about this school and your time here. Certainly everyone has talked about the sisterhood and the values and I'd like to also mention the live faith that all of you have had, and I hope you continue. And how might each of us continue to keep Conley alive for years to come? When I was thinking of what it means to be part of the living stones of Conley, I remembered a motto that the school, your school adopted, and I think is even on this folder I'm using, which is, has been mentioned before, to lead and to serve and to inspire. And I began to play around with those words as well as with the image of being a living stone. 
And I thought, well, stones shape doorways. How will we all be doorways to justice and to equality? How will we lead others to be more authentic in their life? Or to paraphrase Mother Conley, how might we help others be themselves and make themselves all that God wants them to be? I thought stones form walls. I imagine walls that provide safety and security and support, a kind of psychological space for perhaps a spouse or a colleague just to be in the times of turmoil or transition or even self-doubt. How will we serve others by simply listening to them or by being an honest, loyal, and respectful companion? And finally, I thought, stones shape windows. How might we be people who let in the light, who let in fresh air, who think constructively when faced with an issue, who bring a positive and inspirational approach to challenging situations, be they in a work setting or even in our families. The possibilities are limitless. Just use your imagination and think of what has made your four years here at Conley such a treasured experience. Help others find the treasure in their own lives. I'd like to end by recalling another one of Mother Conley's sayings, and I know that this is one that Mrs. Zinkowski at times reminds you of. What one is called to do, she is called to do with all her might. And I'm calling you, graduates of 2020, to be the living stones of Conley. I'm calling you to keep the spirit of our school alive for a very long time. And because we can certainly use some help in doing this, let's remember to say once again, Mother Conley, pray for us. Mother Conley, pray for us. Thank you. As the head of school and lawyer, I'm thinking of the liability on those redwood tables. <laughs> I'm now going to draw your attention to the podium on the other side of the stage where our special awards will begin. As we acknowledge the many achievements that our young women have earned, we have some distinguished guests to help us recognize the exceptional talents of our young women. At this time, Ms. Amanda Bukowski, please come forward to present the first award, and she will be presenting at the other podium. Hello, I am not a Connolly girl, but Listening to all of you today speak, I really wish I was. You're very lucky. So thank you for inviting me to speak today on such a special occasion. I am here to recognize Vanessa Alacon on her achievements with United States figure skating. Vanessa has been skating since the age of three and set her mind to big goals. During her time on the ice, she's become a triple gold medalist in three different branches of our discipline. In addition to her three gold medals, she has also been a six-time national competitor competing at the highest level of our sport, the senior level. These achievements are not easily accomplished and they are truly a lifetime of work for many. She not only achieves the goals she sets out on the ice, but has also been a mentor to many athletes along the way, paving a bright future for those around her. It is my honor and privilege to be Vanessa's coach and present her today on behalf of the United States Figure Skating, the Platinum Award. Mrs. Tran Rai, would you like to introduce the other two guests? Actually, she will be coming up. So will Lieutenant uh, okay. Colonel Skinner please come forward? A 
okay, I grew up with two brothers, and I gave birth to two boys, and I really wish I was a Conley girl right now. <laughs> Just have to say, the sisterhood is amazing. I could see it. Um, and the, the sense of girl power is just awesome. So I am, um, I am the professor of military science at the University of Southern California. I've been in the Army for 21 years. I had the pleasure this year of interviewing a lot of scholarship candidates. And one of those interviews was a Miss Haley Adams from your graduating <laughs> class here. And it's not often that um, we as professors of military science get to actually give the big check to the, the award recipient. Um, a, lot of our, um, a lot of our candidates uh, that we interview end up going to schools and other locations, or I get to come and give it to someone I don't know. But I kind of feel that I know Haley because she did come into my office, super impressive candidate. Um, I got to write a little interview blurb up about her in our interview. And then, of course, all of the interviews that we do, the professors of military science sit back, and a couple weeks later, we're like, oh, which one's got the scholarships? And so Haley got herself a scholarship, and they were like, oh, is she going to get it at USC? Because they knew she wanted to come to USC. And um, she did. So we are so excited. And I'm going to be there for one more year, and I'm going to get to watch this gal um, lead, serve, and inspire in my formation and um, I'm super excited about it. So now I get to give her a big check. She's getting a three-year scholarship worth um, approximately $200,000. So this is a, a big check. So. Lieutenant Colonel Ferg. <laughs> Who's going to wish he's a Connolly girl, too? <laughs> there is no possible way I could have been a Connolly girl. But what a wonderful ceremony, Ms. Sinkowski, Ms. Tran Ryan. Thank you for inviting me and for uh, being here. This is amazing. You guys are so lucky to get to do this. Um, it is my pleasure today to represent the United States Air Force and the Director of Admissions of the United States Air Force Academy, Colonel Arthur Primus, to present Noel Marani with an appointment to the United States Air Force Academy in Colorado Springs, Colorado. Usually we have, um, it's mailed to us and we get to give it to you, but in these times I know it was mailed to you. So I don't actually get to physically present, but this is the formal presentation, and so it is lucky that I actually get to be here to do it today. This appointment is equivalent to being offered a four-year scholarship to a top-tier college with all expenses paid to include tuition, housing, food, books, medical and dental benefits, as well as a monthly living stipend. Appointment to the, appointments to the United States Air Force Academy are very competitive, with most successful applicants in the top 10 to 20 percent of, their, of the country's high school graduating students. Noel is one of only 1,200 candidates offered an appointment this year to the small school environment that is the Air Force Academy. As an academy cadet, she will be joining a select group of students training to become future leaders of character in the world's greatest air and space force. During four years at the academy, she will participate in leadership development programs to include flying aircraft, free fall parachuting, but it's super fun, <laughs> division one athletics or intramural sports, as well as participation in military training and foreign exchange programs around the world. She will pursue a college degree of her choice in one of 27 academic majors, ranging from aeronautical and electrical engineering to history and political science. Noel will also study Air Force history, military affairs, leadership, philosophy, and management. After successfully completing the Academy's four-year academic character and leadership development program, she will graduate with a Bachelor of Science degree and be commissioned as a second lieutenant in the United States Air Force. So congratulations, Noel. You're going from being a koala to a falcon. And you are about to embark on a unique journey that transcends yourself in service to your country. I commend you on your decision to join the world's greatest Air Force. Thank you.
So this year, our seniors presented senior excerpt videos, sharing their insights of what it means to be a Connolly girl and its significance in their lives and in their communities. The students' interview skills, portfolio, senior service project were all graded. The following students were awarded a passing grade with distinction. Please stand and be recognized. Haley Adams. Emily Arndt. Therese Enriquez. Haley Frogner. Allison Hernandez. Anya Ibasco. Aubrey Mandry. Noel Morani. Jessica Ortiz. Sarah Patton, Teresa Perry, on screen Nancy Shao, and Chloe Webb. Congratulations, ladies, and please be seated. The following California Scholarship Federation Gold Seal Bearers have demonstrated consistent and superior scholarship and service. California Scholarship Federation awards life membership in recognition of outstanding scholastic achievement for at least four semesters in 10th, 11th, and 12th grades. Please stand and remain standing when your name is called. Vanessa Alarcon, Emily Arndt, Grace Edwards, Teresa Enriquez, Anya Ibasco, Chelsea Lee, Daisy Lynn, Rayanne Marcial, Noel Morani, Maya Ordonez, Jessica Ortiz, Teresa Perry, Bridget Riley, and on screen, Yee Nancy Shao. Well done, ladies. Please be seated. The following students have earned gold cords to recognize their membership in the National Honor Society. They have maintained a cumulative GPA of 3.7 and above, and have consistently demonstrated the qualities of scholarship, leadership, service, and character. Please stand and remain standing when your name is called. Sarah Akhtar, <laughs> Vanessa Alarcon, Emily Arndt, Grace Edwards, Teresa Enriquez, Allison Hernandez, Huang Huyen, Anya Ibasco, Chelsea Lee, Abriana Mandry, Rayanne Marcial, Nina Menzagopian, Noel Morani, Chloe Nguyen, Maya Donez, Jessica Ortiz, Sarah Patton, Teresa Perry, Bridget Riley, on screen, Yi Yi Nancy Xiao, and on screen, Regina Zhao. Congratulations, please be seated. This year's cords for academic distinction for eight semesters have been presented to the following seniors. Seniors wearing a white cord have earned a 3.75 to 3.99 GPA and are graduating with the cum laude distinction. They are merited by Gwen Chloe Nguyen and Valentina Perez. You may be seated. Seniors wearing a blue cord have earned a 4.0 to a 4.24 GPA and are graduating with the magna cum laude distinction. They are merited by Vanessa Alarcon, Teresa Enriquez, Allison Hernandez, and Bridget Riley. Well done, ladies. You may be seated. Seniors wearing a maroon cord have earned a 4.25 and above GPA and are graduating with a summa cum laude distinction. They are merited by Sarah Akhtar, Emily Arndt, Grace Edwards, Huang Huyen, Anya Ibasco, Chelsea Lee, Gwen Daisy Lin, Rayanne Marcial, Nina Menzagopian, Noel Morani, Maya Ordonez, Jessica Ortiz, Sarah Patton, Teresa Perry, and on screen, Yi Yi Nancy Shao. Congratulations, ladies. Please be seated. The following students have honors at entrance or merit scholarships at various colleges and universities. These scholarships amount to $5,100,000. 
$119,898. As I call your name, please stand and remain standing until the last award recipient has been called. Haley Adams, Vanessa Alarcon, Emily Arndt, Teresa Enriquez, Haley Frogner, Allison Hernandez, Daisy Ibarra, Anya Ibasco, Chelsea Lee, Rayanne Marcial, Noel Morani, Maya Ordonez, Teresa Perry, on screen Nancy Shao, Daniela Zavala, Marissa Zavala, and on screen Regina Zhao. Congratulations to achievements. Please be seated. The Department Achievement Certificates are for distinguished achievement here at Cornelia Conley School and have been awarded to the following students. When your name is called, please come forward to receive your certificate. For Performing Arts, Anya Ibasco. For Visual Arts, Jessica Ortiz. Lord, may each of these graduates paint your world with the colors of generosity and loving care. May they always shade the poor and the helpless with kindness. May they show the world a perspective like none other. May you mold them like a piece of clay to do your will. May they live in harmony with others and be an instrument in concert with your will, remembering to always share the song in their hearts with others who may not yet have heard your voice and can't seem to find their own. May their inner beauty be found in every note they sing. Lord, direct their paths and help them to use and share the talents you've blessed them with to the best of their abilities and to always remember how much they are loved. For community service, Daisy Ibarra. For religious studies, Teresa Perry. May you strive towards excellence in all that you do. May you celebrate and lift up those around you. May your voice rise up to pronounce peace and justice in the world. May you discover holiness in the midst of life's blessings as well as life's challenges. May you conduct your life's work with exceptional skill and integrity. And may you inspire to go forth and set the world on fire. For English, the department award goes to Chelsea Lee. And graduates, from the English department, we pray that you read with empathy, reason, and excitement, that you write with passion, detail, and precision, and overall, that you make your life a good story.
German mathematician Richard Krant wrote that mathematics as an expression of the human mind reflects the active will, the contemplative, contemplative reason, and the desire to, for aesthetic perfection. Its basic elements are logic and intuition, analysis and construction, generality and individuality. The mathematics department is proud to recognize on the screen Yee Yee Nancy Shell. May God bless you and the entire class of 2020 on all your future academic and mathematical endeavors. The Science Department Award is awarded to Noel Morani. And graduates, may the Lord, creator of the universe, master of all things, and author of our very lives, bless you now and in the future. As you continue to study and learn, may you combine human wisdom with divine faith. May you progress in the sciences, studying what God has made, while also growing in knowledge and love of God, the creator. May you do this so as to better the lot of the human race and render greater glory to God. Thank you. In the World Language Department, the award is merited by Teresa Enriquez. As you graduate and venture out in the world, may you always carry with you an understanding, tolerance, and respect for other cultures. The Social Science Department awards our department award to Jessica Ortiz. Graduates, may your thirst to explore the world never diminish. May you see the good in society and seek to advance it. May you empathize with the powerless and advocate for the voiceless. May you reach out for those that disagree with you to build a compromise. May you look at the facts and use reasoned judgment, even if it is uncomfortable. May you leave the world better than how you found it. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Marshall. Before Mr. Marshall and I present today's special awards, we are almost there, folks, I promise. I want to take a moment to tell you a secret. No, we are not to remain open, but almost as good. I am going to share with you who dear Cornelia is. Do y'all know who Dear Cornelia is in our Connolly Chronicle, our advice columnist? Three years ago when we started the Connolly Chronicle, I needed someone to write the advice column, Dear Cornelia. The person I chose was a sophomore back then, which means that she is a senior now and is sitting on this stage. Through the years, every month she read and responded to countless requests for advice, and she always did so with grace and in the spirit of Mother Connolly. No one knew who dear Cornelia is. Not Sister Francine, not Miss Serrano, not any of the teachers other than Miss Torres, who's the current advisor. The, uh, the editor-in-chief, Emily Arndt, knew who she was. And that was about it. And so with Emily's permission, thank you, Emily, I am going to reveal the secret of who Dear Cornelia is so. Dear Cornelia, will you please grace us with your presence?
and now to present the special awards. The St. Teresa of Avila Award it recognizes for, recognized for her innovative and authoritative scholarship and her contemplative spirituality, St. Teresa of Avila, a doctor of the church, demonstrated intellectual challenge as well as the charisma of service and meditation. The Religious Studies Department would like to recognize a student who has distinguished herself in religious studies throughout her four years at Connolly. This year's recipient of the Teresa, St. Teresa of Avila Award goes to three students, Teresa Perry, Therese Enriquez, and Aubrey Mandry. Top academic average. This year, the following students merited the award for achieving the top academic average in her three or four years at Connolly. This award is merited to Anya Bosco and Chelsea Lee. Cornelian Leadership Award. Leadership is a gift to be discovered and nurtured. Many Connolly students come to the school with leadership potential and during their years here experience many opportunities for the development and sharing of this gift. The Cornelian Leadership Award is granted to a senior who has demonstrated outstanding leadership in service to the entire school community. This year, the Cornelian Leadership Award is given to Daisy Ibarra and Jessica Ortiz. Jacqueline Vale Memorial Award. Jackie was a 1982 graduate and an accomplished artist. She died after a long, valiant struggle with cystic fibrosis. The award, established by her parents, Mr. and Mrs. Jack Vale, and Sister Joan, is given to graduating seniors who have shown extraordinary ability in the arts, along with high academic standing. The Jacqueline Vale Memorial Award this year is pre presented to Teresa Perry and Nina Menzogovian. The Head of School Award. The Head of School Award is chosen by our Head of School, Mrs. Sankowski, and is awarded to a young woman who Mrs. Sankowski knows to exemplify all that it means to be a Connolly girl. This young woman is a joy-filled learner who serves the whole Connolly community with dignity, grace, and humor. Her love for her sisters 
With love for her sisters, she goes above and beyond to ensure that all are cared for and all are loved. In the spirit of Cornelia Connolly, she leads, serves, and inspires everyone she meets. This year, the Head of School Award is presented to Daisy Ibarra. The Jean Marie Jordan Memorial Award. The Jean Marie Jordan Memorial Award, established by Mr. and Mrs. Bernard Jordan in memory of their daughter, is given to the graduating senior as nominated by her classmates, who best exemplifies a spirit of friendliness, dedication to Connolly, and cooperation with faculty and students. The Jean Marie Jordan Memorial Award is presented to Aubrey Mandry. Connolly Cup. The Connolly Cup, Cornelia Connolly School's highest honor, is given to the graduate who best exemplifies the holy child ideal in Christian leadership, loyalty, achievement in studies, and dedicated service. This year, it is with a sense of great pride that by faculty vote, the Connolly Cup is being awarded to Teresa Enriquez. We have come to that time. And so this concludes our last, actually you go, right, Jonathan? Sorry, we haven't come to that time. Mr. Arnold's going to lead us. Sorry, Mr. Arnold.
Thank you, Mr. Arnold. Thank you, Grove. And so this concludes our last commencement exercise at Cornelia Connolly School of the Holy Child. <clears throat> On behalf of the entire faculty and staff, it has been our joy in teaching, guiding, and truly loving your daughters and all of you. We know that these incredible young women are incredible in large part because of you. Clearly, you have loved them and taught them well. And we are so very grateful for your support throughout the years and want you to know that this community, past and present, will always hold a special place in our hearts. We say it all the time. There is no place like Connolly. Following the recession of our graduates, faculty and staff, dinner will be served in our courtyard for those who RSVP'd. And now, no, <laughs> ladies, are you ready? Okay, please stand, faculty stand, for the final singing of our school's alma mater. on the beautiful and brilliant Connolly class of 2020.